Hey everyone, and welcome to my first impression of Throne and Liberty. Yes, I decided to do something a little different today uh, while I'm recording this, and figured I would share some of my thoughts on the shiny new free-to-play MMO from NCSoft, which is currently in open beta. I recently uh, streamed it over the weekend, and after spending some time with the game, I just thought I'd share some of my initial thoughts and um, sort of where the game kind of sits with me and how I feel about it. So, let's get into it. So, Throne and Liberty welcomes you to the vast world of Silesium, with a very brief opening cinematic that, thankfully, doesn't overstay its welcome. Uh, you're quickly thrust into the action with a straightforward introduction, setting the stage for what's to come. Now, if you're a fan of games like Black Desert Online, you'll find the combat system somewhat familiar. It's very hack and slash, which can be a bit repetitive, but hey, it's flashy. It's fun to watch. It's kind of like a Michael Bay movie, just lots of explosions, just very little substance. Now, one thing Throne Liberty does now is its flexibility with the controls. I think whether you're an old school with a keyboard and mouse or you prefer a controller, the game adapts seamlessly, so there's no need to pick any sides in that eternal war. Now when it comes to the character creation, well, the options are absurdly detailed, letting you tweak everything from your back cheek to your front cheek. No, I'm not kidding. This ensures you can create a character as unique or bizarre as you please. Do you want a hero with mismatched eyes and a mohawk? Go for it. The sky's the limit. Now, before you panic at the sight of the Amazon Studios logo, just relax. They only published the game, so they didn't develop it. So we're not looking at a repeat of the New World debacle and how that launch went. Well, at least I hope not. However, uh, with Throne in Liberty, it does tend to feel like your typical Asian MMO. It is solid and does a decent job of immersing you in its wild world. and you are constantly reminded of your special status as a star child, which is a fancy way of saying you're important. Very important. And they probably won't let you forget it. Now, one of the standout features in this game is its approach to mounts. Instead of your usual horse or your dragon, you morph into different creatures. Whether you're on land, which you transform into a dog or a wolf type creature, or perhaps in the sky you, as you soar as an eagle, or when you jump into the water and you swim, there's a cute little otter with a leaf on its head. <laughs> no, I'm an otter. <laughs> I'm an otter. It's a refreshing twist that adds some fun variety. Uh, and there are some additional navigational abilities, such as being able to grappling hook your way up to high vantage points. The cinematics are, though, genuinely epic, and they do add a grandiose feel to the game. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a bit late. That one must have taken Adriana away! <clears throat> you have a star fragment just like that girl. I won't be going home empty-handed after. I'm a star child. Watch out. The combat, while it can be a bit monotonous, uh, I do find it is satisfying when you're facing off against bosses. Um, but however, everything else does tend to die pretty quick. So, anyway. I would say though, you need to be prepared for those fetch quests. Um, I found that was pretty much all I did during the first 10 levels and it probably will continue beyond that based on what I've read online. This is the MMO way. So, yeah, it is what it is. I am on the fence though about sticking with this game. Uh, I will potentially continue with it, but I don't think it offers anything groundbreaking at this point. I was really hoping that the combat system would be akin to New World, which despite its flaws had a nice satisfying weightiness to it. Um, and I thought it was going to have that based on what I had seen from the gameplay, but once I dived into it and got my hands on it, I just felt it didn't quite deliver on that front. 
The voice acting is a little bit hit and miss. Uh, sometimes it can be really good, but it does sometimes fall out of sync with the subtitles. And I'm surprisingly certain that they hired the narrator from Baldur's Gate 3 because she sounds eerily familiar. Um, so maybe she's going to be the narrator guru for video games. My biggest issue, though, I will have to say is probably the UI. So, you know, whether you're using the controller or the keyboard and mouse, I just find it's overall clunky and overwhelming. Like, they focused way too much on the aesthetics and the functionality, giving you way too many options, which makes navigating through the menus feels like wading through molasses. Now, despite the flaws and critiques, I will say that as a free-to-play game, it is worth a shot. It's not a game changer, but it's worth a try. As I said, I'm only really a few hours in. I got to play it the weekend on my stream, and I might do a follow-up for this once I've delved a little deeper. Feel free to uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share your thoughts. What are your initial impressions of Throne and Liberty? Do you think this will be an MMO that will make an impact, or is it just another fantasy game in an overcrowded market? Personally, I am a little bit tired of the endless fantasy MMOs. It would be nice to see the genre branch out a bit more. Now, my personal favourite was always Secret World, but since that game was rebranded to Secret World Legends, it hasn't quite been the same. And I do feel that some of the other genres are lacking in the MMO department. Anyway, that's all from me. Thanks for listening to my ramble about this new game. I have once again been an unprofessional gamer, and that's a wrap.